So I wasn't sure if I really wanted to respond or not because it's clear we're never going to agree or even meet halfway because um, the morbid atheist and I are coming from such divergent uh, perspectives and really these are these are attitudes we take towards the universe. I think for me to try to provide evidence to support my particular way of relating to the universe would be um, ignored by the morbid atheist because from his perspective what I would present as evidence wouldn't count, it wouldn't register. Um, and it's just a matter of our temperaments. Um, the way we relate to mystery, for example, you know, I don't think anything science has told us um, about the nature of the universe has lessened mystery. If anything, it's deepened it. You know, all the great minds, uh, the great scientists have, have recognized this. You know, Einstein was in awe of the universe. Um, so, you know, for him to want to completely dismiss mystery and say that we no longer have a need to relate to the universe in, um, in a as though it were something mysterious. I think that's a, um, a short-sighted view, honestly. I, you know, I don't understand it. Um, you know, and the few criticisms you raised I wanted to respond to. In terms of matter being a process of becoming rather than a substance, um, I think most physicists would agree with that. Um, matter is energy. Um, if, you know, if you look back uh, to the evolution of matter, you'll see that after the Big Bang it was sort of um, you know, one of the names used for it was, or is, um, a quantum foam of energy expanding, and as it cooled off, um, you know, the first, uh, protons and, and electrons solidified, and then found each other, and the first atoms were produced, and then, you know, these hydrogen atoms, due to gravitational attraction, formed stars, which created heavier elements, which created, uh, the possibility of planets, which then organized these atoms into larger molecules, which eventually became amino acids, and then eventually free-living cells emerged. And so matter is a process of becoming. I don't know exactly what it is that you're um, calling into question about that. Um, you know, I'd be glad to discuss it further. Um, in terms of uh, the intellect and emotion. Um, you know, the reason I've made videos about that is just to show um, how whatever we think our objective facts are about the universe in itself, they're never existing outside of our emotional attitudes. Um, the intellect is itself driven and motivated by our emotional desire to know. And so, you know, certainly there is such a thing as wishful thinking, um, but unless we desired knowledge of a certain kind, we would never get any knowledge. Um, and so for you to, to sort of create this dichotomy between, you know, um, the hard facts and wishful thinking, I think is, you know, it works to a certain point, but, you know, for me to see the universe as mysterious, for example, um, it's not wishful thinking. It's, I think, just acknowledging the reality and not pretending as though science has has completely uh, explained everything. It's certainly um, given us a deeper insight into the nature of the, the coherency of the universe and how it, it seems to fit together. But, you know, while we have all these mathematical descriptions of gravity, we don't know why gravity works the way it does. Um, you know, science Whitehead, a philosopher, said that science isn't about um, causes or explaining causes. It's about giving us insight into why nature is coherent, into why it all fits together, or how it all fits together, not so much why. Why questions is where the mystery comes in, and I don't think science can really touch the whys, the why questions. That's why the mystery remains, even though we have these wonderful scientific descriptions of reality. So, um, in terms of consciousness, uh, I don't think atoms are conscious. Conscious is a very late, very complex um, uh, phenomenon which emerged, you know, only in organisms with very complex nervous systems. And 
I would rather say that atoms are, they possess some primitive form of experience, even if all they are aware of is a gravitational gradient. Um, unless we give them some sort of an interior, some sort of a feeling or awareness, I don't see how it could ever evolve in more complex organisms like ourselves. Um, it seems miraculous to assume that matter is this dead, insentient, completely unfeeling stuff that at, at some point in evolution just snapped into consciousness and awareness and all of a sudden had uh, an interior experience. I think the interior experience was there from the beginning and it slowly became more complex, more developed as evolution proceeded and the material form became more complex. Um, you know, and if you want to know more about that, Google pan experientialism. Um, now, in terms of um, particles uh, popping into and out of existence, if you Google uh, the quantum vacuum or the uh, Kashmir effect, uh, Casimir effect, I'll put it in the description box. Um, you'll see where the evidence for this comes from. Um, in terms of particles being connected at a distance, uh, Google the EPR uh, paradox or Bell's theorem um, or non-locality. There have also been experiments that have proven uh, this connection at a distance. Um, what else did you bring up? Um, yeah, I, I'll just leave it at that. Um, and, you know, I'm perfectly willing to continue the discussion but, um, you know, I think it's clear that uh, we're probably not going to convince each other of anything. But nonetheless, it could be fun. So uh, thanks, for your, uh, thanks for your video. Take it easy.